guys, this is Miss Stanley, and today we're going to talk about something very scary. Your essential question for today is, what is magical realism, and how can I identify it in the texts I read? In all the time that I've spent as a reader, and a college student, and now as a teacher, there's one specific term that keeps coming up, and that term is magical realism. Now, in my attempts to figure out what this is, I did some research. I found out that magical realism was once used as a term to describe a genre of art that emerged after World War I. One of the frontrunners in this type of art was Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo was most famous for her self-portraits, which she often painted realistically, but with juxtaposed or magical elements. Magical realism emerged as a writing style around the 1940s, and even though it can be found all across the globe, it has been perfected by Latin American artists. But Miss Stanley, what is magical realism? Is it magic? Is it real? Well, it's both. Magical realism is a genre that incorporates magic or fantasy into an otherwise ordinary and believable world. Not only that, the magic is normalized, which means that everybody in the text isn't surprised by the magical things that happen in their normal world. So what are some examples of this? Even though the term magical realism wasn't technically coined until the 40s, you can still see examples of magical realism in some Shakespearean plays, such as Hamlet and Macbeth. Toni Morrison also often employs magical realism, as seen in Sula and Song of Solomon. Some other examples include A Wrinkle in Time, Bless Me Ultima by Rodolfo Anaya, and Ceremony by Leslie Marmon Silco. Since magical realism can be particularly tricky to define, I figured I'd help you out by giving you some non-examples as well. For example, Lord of the Rings takes place in an entirely different universe. It's completely made up, which makes it fantasy and not magical realism. Likewise, the Chronicles of Narnia and the Wizard of Oz start in realistic places and take place in fantasy worlds. Also, the entire Harry Potter series. It's got magic, and it is kind of realistic, but it's not magical realism. There's too much fantasy, and it's, well, fantasy. Now, all of these books aren't the only examples and non-examples of magical realism. They're just a few key ones to help you understand. So now that we've seen a lot of examples of magical realism in text, it's important for me to point out that magical realism can also be in other forms. For example, film. The following short film is a good example of this, but please be warned. It does contain vulgar language and themes of bullying and bloody violence. It is intended for junior and senior classes who have mature eyes and ears. If you want to skip this video, please feel free to do so. Now, get ready for The Birch. Some believe that the forest cares for nothing itself. That's not true. If you listen carefully, you can hear its voice. Its tortured heart can feel our pain. Talk to me, talk to me. Hey, 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 I just want to chat, I just want to chat. You fucking scared for her? Eh? Are you crying? Are you crying, boy? Crying, piggy. protect you, just as I have always done, just as she did for me. Look for her 
mark in the forest. He who makes me, I shall come. He who breaks me shall come undone. He who makes me, I shall come. He who breaks me shall come undone. realism can exist not only in film and text and art, but also that it can be blended with other genres, such as fiction, historical fiction, and even horror. This is really important because the blending of magical realism with other genres can make it really difficult for you as a reader or viewer to define it in the text. So, in order to defeat the magical realism monster, remember these two characteristics of magical realism. First, there is a presence of magic or fantasy, but the world in itself is otherwise normal or ordinary. And even though you as the reader might find the magic strange, the characters within the text are not surprised by it, and they accept it as part of their everyday world. Congratulations! That's all it takes to defeat the magical realism monster. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at teachingwithstanley at gmail.com.